Hello and welcome. My name is Joanna Pinkowska and I am representing AV Systems Marketing Team. It is my pleasure to welcome you to today's webinar, Help Your IoT Customers Move from 3G to 4G in a DIY style. Before we begin, I would like to go through some housekeeping things. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit them through the question tab on the right hand side of the panel. Feel free to ask questions during any time of this presentation. We will have some time to answer them at the end of the session. Also, we will send a recording of this presentation to all of the attendees. And now let's get to know our speakers. Um, to explain today's topic, I am pleased to be joined by three speakers. First, we have William Yen, President Americas at AV System. Second, we have Jim Neff, Head of Sales and Marketing at Cellbounce. Third, we have Jay Robertson, Senior Vice President Product Management at ADT. And now let me briefly go through today's agenda. First, we're gonna explain and discuss the issues caused by the 3G sunset. You'll also have a chance to hear a customer perspective provided by ADT. Then our experts will describe the solution introduced by AV system and Cellbounce and explain how it addresses the issue of this technology transition. Finally, we will summarize the benefits of the solution. Last but not least, we secured some time to answer your questions at the end of the session. Once again, I encourage you to submit them on the right-hand side of the panel. And without further ado, Jim, over to you. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Joanna. I uh, wanted to take a few minutes to start. Uh, uh, welcome, everybody, and, and thank you for spending the time with us here over the next uh, hour. Uh, but I wanted to take a few minutes and just recap why we're all here today. Uh, uh, an issue or a, a challenge that's, that's facing all of us is the uh, decommissioning of the 3G networks. So as uh, you all know, these networks uh, are, you know, the old networks are going away and being decommissioned around the world. And it's providing a, a challenge for operators and customers uh, alike in that there's millions of devices, specifically IoT devices out there that are still dependent on 3G networks for communications to function. And in many cases, the cost to upgrade or replace those devices can be very substantial and a distraction uh, to a day-to-day -day business for an operation. So uh, we came up with a solution to help try to resolve this issue. Um, and some of the, the business risks and, and, and issues that people are facing, uh, you know, from a cellular provider standpoint is, you know, customers, you know, not renewing their subscriptions or moving to a competitor in these times of transition, uh, the satisfaction of customers, uh, with their telcos and carriers, uh, having to deal with this upgrade. And then, um, also, the cost to maintain these 3G networks is obviously substantial to the telcos and the carriers themselves that are trying to migrate to the, the newer, more efficient networks uh, who are trying to set times and move their customers onto the newer generation technologies uh, that are sometimes struggling or lagging to do so. So uh, we hope the solution we discussed today will uh, you know, give you another option to help move your customers, help meet these time frames to, to uh, migrate your networks and um, you know, give you another option besides just a full rip and replace or potentially just losing customers uh, completely. Um, we wanted to start out with a, a, a bit of a unique perspective from an actual uh, business that's impacted by the 3G sunset. I wanted to introduce Jay Robertson. He's the SVP of uh, product management with ADT. Obviously, they're a substantial, uh, a very large alarm uh, provider here in the US. Uh, who is facing quite a challenge with the 3G sunset. And I'll turn it over to Jay to talk more about that. Yeah, thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. And uh, welcome, everybody, to the call. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, from, from our perspective, we're, a, if, for those maybe not familiar with ADT, a large security provider 
in the United States. Um, we have m millions of customers and the primary commu communication method for those customers is uh, over cellular. And um, we, we have, you know, many customers are on the 3G network. So, so this this sunset is, is obviously something that we've been uh, focused on quite a bit for the last, uh, you know, year plus as uh, our carrier Years are you know scheduling their sunsets, which are coming up in in 2022. Um, j just a, a few uh, f pieces of feedback relative to you know some of the implications or impacts the the 3G sunsets having on us and 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 also our our competitors, um, the entire industry, and, and quite frankly other industries as well. Is you know first and foremost, it's it's just disruptive, um, and I'm sure you guys uh, in the telco space understand that in, in most cases, or at least for us specifically, the historic way that we would have to, to up, upgrade the radios is to you know, roll a truck out to the customer's home. So th there's certainly quite a bit of disruption that happens there, both not, not only to the company, to us, uh, as well as the customer. And uh, obviously, you know, if you have happy customers and, and they're, they're quiet customers, meaning that their service is going well, um, that, that's always the kind of the ideal customer. And, you know, when we have to proactively engage with them and, and you know, let them know that we've got to upgrade things in their system, it, it, it certainly is disruptive, not, not only from a resource perspective, uh, obviously, you know, having to manage our day to day business, plus now touch, you know, millions of customers and, and roll trucks to millions of customers homes, um, which which obviously creates some resource strain, you know, with our technician and our, our you know, field folks, but it's obviously also disruptive to the customers who you know, have to uh, schedule time to have somebody in their home, you know, take off of work, those kinds of things. And, and certainly with that, there's there's many, you know, scheduling and logistics challenges. Um, you know, operationally, you have to have teams to support the, the process. Um, and, and not to mention, of course, you know, uh, our favorite topic, COVID and the pandemic, makes it even more challenging for us to get into homes. And, and many customers really just don't want uh, a technician in their house uh, to, 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 to do anything. You know, it's also a very costly endeavor, um, as you can imagine, having to you know purchase uh, hardware for each of the, the customers that require the upgrade. Uh, there's a cost associated with that. Uh, in our case, obviously, we have to roll a truck uh, for, for the traditional path for upgrading these customers, and and you know there's definitely a cost there. And you know, with that process, obviously, we we optimize our our labor force to the the amount of volume of, of sales and, and service tickets and, and the types of things that come up in our day-to-day -day operations. Now having to layer on top of all of that, um, the, the additional uh, effort to now go into otherwise happy customers and upgrade their, their equipment, it, it requires us to hire a bunch of additional labor to, to support that, both on the technician side as well on the operational support side. And you know, there's also marketing uh, activities, email and direct mail, and some of the, the kind of the ways in which we would communicate or we are communicating to our customers to notify them about the upgrade, but also to, to you know, obviously to, to, to get them to interact with us. Um, there, there's uh, quite a cost there as well. So, so all in, you know, very costly endeavor when, when the network goes away. And as you can imagine in the security industry, um, you know, there's, there's a, a primary path of, of cellular if that goes away, we can no longer provide our service to those customers. And, uh, you know, the, the kind of the implication there is, is obviously we would have to cancel their service, which is not good for the customer and certainly not good for us, uh, especially for a company in the life safety business. And, and lastly, I would say in terms of the impacts is just opportunity cost. I'm sure, you know, everybody on the call understands that, you know, one, when we have to make such a significant effort to touch, you know, such large portions of our customer base, it, it requires us to focus on that effort specifically. And, and obviously, therefore, we can't uh, engage in other priorities that would be focused on, you know, maybe more business growth or efficiencies, those kinds of things. So, so there's definitely a lost uh, oppor opportunity cost there. And, and then for ADT, we have, you know, many uh, employees across all of our business units. And so uh, with care and marketing, customer experience, product, uh, obviously, uh, you know, many different touch points with the customer and each one of those groups have to dedicate resources to focus on this, which, as I mentioned previously, just uh, removes the opportunity for them to focus on that kind of the normal day to day. Uh, so I'd say in, in, in summary, you know, certainly hugely disruptive. We certainly understand the, the, the need for that with, uh, you know, some of the telcos and the, the cost efficiencies there and, and everybody has to move their business forward. But, 
you know, ho hopefully this gives a, a little bit of a, a, a picture of, you know, it is a, a significant effort uh, to move customers. It takes, you know, many months to, to, to move those customers and, and there's, there's a ton of costs associated with that. So, you know, companies have to have, uh, you know, budgets allocated and, and hire, you know, workforce and labor to support it. Uh, so, so as much advance notice as possible is is obviously a preferred approach as uh, as you know where it's you guys are all contemplating the uh, the sunsets. Um, with that, I'll turn it back over to Jim. I think he'll walk you through a few slides on the uh, the the DIY solution that Cellbounce created to uh, hopefully resolve uh, this issue for for the masses across the world. Thanks, Jay. Yeah, with the with the sunset. Pending, uh, you know, AV System and Cell Bounce came together and, and put together a solution with a few um, ideas in mind and what we wanted to create. And it, the key of this, or the heart of it, if you will, is, is we wanted to have a solution that would allow the 3G devices that are out operating in the field the ability to, to work as is without having to touch them, without having to send a technician to either replace them or upgrade them in any way to be as uh, unobtrusive to the business operations and the customers as possible. We wanted to leverage standard 4G networks, protocols, et cetera, nothing proprietary, um, you know, using, uh, again, the standard networks and components available in the market. Uh, we wanted to make this, uh, uh, you know, it's a long-term solution. You can deploy this and use it for years. It's not meant to be a Band-Aid. Um, it's uh, built from, again, standard you know, uh, components, modules, chipsets, et cetera, um, relies on the 4G uh, networks for the communications going forward. And it, you know, the, the key of it is, the, and, and Will will talk about this in a little bit, is the, is the auto config server platform um, that allows the zero touch provisioning and the device management that he'll cover in just a little bit. So the solution at a high level, and let me just go ahead one second and then come back to give you an idea. So this is this is the cell bounce device right here in its current variant. It's a, a simple device, if you will, or a box. Um, so I want to give you a physical or, a, or a, you know, mentally you can picture what this is. So it's simply a device that plugs into the wall or powered in, in multiple ways that at the heart of it is uh, the, the cell bounce board inside. And if you think of it on the left side here, there's a 3G antenna, <clears throat> excuse me, with a 3G uh, chipset inside, a femtocell chipset. And then on the other side, there's a 4G antenna uh, with a standard 4G module inside of it. On the 3G side, it simply connects to the existing 3G device, whether it's an alarm panel, utility meter, uh, vending machine. I mean, any, any 3G device uh, that you can think of it establishes that 3G connection and becomes the connection, if you will, for this device going forward. It no longer looks at the macro network. It'll establish a one-to-one -one relationship and simply communicate with our device. On the other end, it acts as an, a normal 4G device on the network. So for if you're a, a carrier, for example, this has your standard 4G SIM card inside. The old 3G SIM in account goes dormant and this device looks like a 4G SIM card on your network going forward. So we don't sell data plans or SIM cards, et cetera. That stays between the customer and their, and their cellular provider as it is today. We're simply selling the device that goes between. The key value in this is that it allows you to do a, a do-it-yourself or a user install so typically this device is sent to your customer or the end user. They take it out of a box. They find an outlet somewhere about 25 feet or so away from the existing 3G device and plug it in and they're done. In order for this to happen, there has to be some processes in the background as you could appreciate. And that's handled by the ACS again that we'll we'll cover in just a little bit. So again, this is the current variant uh, with approximate dimensions. Uh, right now, um, it is includes a 24-hour backup battery. So therefore, the size. We're also uh, developing a variant, <clears throat> excuse me, a different for form factor without a battery. So it can fit in smaller spaces or for different use cases. But you can have it with or without a battery. We can support multiple 3G bands or 4G bands, depending on where you're at in the world. 
um, again, using uh, standard chipsets inside to do that and fully cert certified uh, with the carriers themselves. So the, the second piece of the solution, if you will, the first piece being the actual physical device that we'd send to your customers, the second piece of this is the um, auto configuration server itself. And this is the high level diagram of how it looks. This is the cell bounce device here, establishes the 3G connection with the, the 3G device. And then there are some uh, touch points in the background and some integrations that happen to route the data as needed that are managed by the auto configuration server. And I'll let Will talk about that in more detail. So Will, let me toss it over to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, as Jay uh, explained uh, really well, the disruption of the 3G sunset. And one is how do you minimize your cost, do it efficiently? And uh, that's one. Second one is how do you leverage the event to actually uh, take it more positive to set up for your companies, your organizations, digital transformation. So we at AV System is a software company. So uh, like uh, uh, Jim mentioned, we are working uh, in the background. So we are the one not uh, doing the device itself. We're managing, managing the device. So this diagram gives you a high level uh, kind of a flow of uh, where it sits, uh, things sit. The auto configuration server is a management platform. First, it manages, meaning provisions, activates, monitors. On the right, the CP34, the cell bounce device, which uh, is the cell bounce gateway that converts your 3G signal to work on a 4G network. Up to the north, we facilitate, the ACS is the platform, facilitates the communication with the carrier's IoT gateway. And further, if you look at the ACS to the left, what it does is a integration platform, integrating with a security company, in this case, ADT or anybody else, and your back office platforms being alarm panels, or your CRM systems, account information, things like that. So uh, the key here is there is a device, there's an issue connecting the device, being able to facilitate uh, data flow, being able to detect issues, being able to resolve the issues as quickly as possible. That's the management platform's function. So a few words for those uh, the, those of you who are not quite familiar with uh, Auto Configuration Server, also known as ACS. It's a technology term. Uh, it's facilitated by uh, a, a standard body called Broadband Forum. It's a worldwide. It's been around for, you know, 20 some years now. The other word for it is TR69. So some of you may be uh, more familiar or in tune with the technology term. TR69 or ACS. So generically, what does TR69 ACS do? It provides a monitoring, provisioning, authentication of any communication devices. Here are listed a few bullet points here for you. Zero touch configuration of the device. Configuration remotely. I think Jay uh, said eloquently. You know, this day in age, in this pandemic especially, uh, people not very welcome to have you come into the house. And uh, so doing it digitally, doing it remotely, I think the word remote is the key for our solution together. You got this package from Jim, <laughs> from Cell Bounce, the gateway in the mail. Your grandma or grandpa, in this case, can just plug in to the wall. And uh, the auto configuration server detects it, activating it, integrates with back office, it's just going to work. So zero touch configuration, you don't have to mess around with it or go through a fancy manual to uh, set it up. This does dynamic provisioning of your service. It performs all these firmware on the device. Uh, any device has uh, come with a certain type of uh, firmware uh, updates 
perform security updates, you know, uh, for security reasons, any devices, even your laptop today, your cell phone, and you get this uh, security patch alerts all the time. It does it remotely over the air in the cloud for you. The other thing is for ACS is doing status monitoring. It monitors the uh, up and down, loss of communication, loss of service, if it's happening, and uh, signal degradation of the device, performance of the device, performs uh, diagnostics of the uh, quality of service uh, received on the device itself. So uh, as you can tell, by zero touch provisioning, the platform reduces the number of customer calls, right? And uh, when you have an issue, you would rather have it uh, done, detected, resolved autonomously instead of you have to make a phone call. Therefore, for security service companies, the service provider, they avoid uh, receiving a call. Is avoid expensive truck rolls, right? Anytime you send a truck roll uh, to somebody's house in the U.S., the average cost about two hundred dollars to three hundred dollars. So it reduces the operational cost, and therefore leading to more satisfaction because the customer experience or quality of service improves. Okay, another way of looking at. Uh, the ACS server is, uh, this probably provides a little bit more uh, clarity in terms of uh, where, how the data flows from the uh, carriers, uh, you know, being either AT&T or in the US would be AT&T or Verizon or T-Mobile for that matter. The provision flows through the IoT gateway from the device to the back office of the security service provider. So in terms of deployment, uh, we've also been asked, uh, we have a very strict, uh, strict secure enterprise security requirements. Uh, we want this to be deployed on premise uh, at our own data center. Can you do that? The answer is yes. Well, the others uh, may choose to, you know what? Our core competency, uh, either I'm in the automotive, or I'm in the utility business, uh, or in the security uh, business, and that's our business. Doing this IT, you know, getting a device working and monitoring it is not our thing. I like you guys do the turnkey solution over the in the cloud. It can be deployed in the public cloud of your choice. You got either Google Cloud or Amazon, Microsoft Azure of whatever your choice, or you can contract with us or with ADT through uh, cell bonds. Uh, through a uh, deploy over our own cloud. And um, so that's the two uh, options you have in terms of deployment. Uh, in terms of monitoring, here I'm showing you an example. A monitoring, a remote monitoring is the key. If you look at the, what we're doing, the example showing here is you can pick any time of uh, time range. It's the hour, certain hours you want to monitor, certain days of the week or certain weeks of the, of the month you want to monitor. And you look at uh, the service duration, availability time, downtime, reset, mean time between you know, device failure and the volumes of the calls, things like that. If you look at a far right top corner, it allows you, the platform allows you to compare devices even. You can add devices, uh, you can add a certain groups, create different groups of devices to monitor by manufacturer, by uh, the model, by the brand, or even by the firmware uh, on the device themselves. So the other key feature of the uh, management platform, remotely managing, provisioning, monitoring the device is auto discovery, where the device are, what kind of parameters that you want to uh, track and trace, providing you a dashboard for uh, monitoring. And you can see all these uh, uh, key factors being displayed here. For well, any uh, management platform, in by itself, probably have a limited value. If you just want to get data or status of a device, 
the key business insight is when you be able to integrate with your uh, business applications. In this case, platform integration is the key. And that's what comes with our ACS platform uh, management capability. So example shown here is with open API, you can um, integrate with your CRM system. In this case, could be your account information. Who is that customer? Where does the customer reside? And what is the service plan that customer uh, subscribes to? All of the details that are at your fingertips. You can also look at a device dashboard on the right, looking at the device grouping, where, where does it belong to, where does it go, what's the performance, what's it red, green, yellow, all these uh, alerts that you, you wanted to track. So integration is the key. That gives you the insight, contextual data to make a, a, a smart business decisions. So uh, when you design any management platform, you really get to have your user uh, in mind, right? That's the people who are using the platform uh, to manage your business. So the first example uh, I'm showing here is customer care group. So this is the CSRs in your call center are uh, uh, looking, serving the customer, right? Hopefully before the customer has to call for services, you already know at the top uh, screen, you see the device info. And at the bottom, you see the service status. Uh, what, what is on, what is the uh, weak signal, uh, what is uh, a need improvement. So for customer care, CSRs, that's the user. So the next one, the screen I'm showing you is a dashboard for a network operations center. This is the NOC. So most operations have a NOC, the NOC engineers, uh, operations engineers looking at the device. If you want to add a device, add a model, uh, uh, performing a firmware updates, all of that, you need to know where is the device, uh, what's the status, and uh, where do you, can you add. By the way, all of these uh, UI, user interface, the front end, can be customized to your needs. One is can be integrated with your back office. Two, it can be customized to the needs, to the e-workflow, your CSRs, your NOC operators uh, 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 tuned to. Uh, I think uh, uh, Jim is going to come back to, or I think Jay is going to come back to discuss the, the value of, uh, of the solution. From our perspective, AV system, we are a technology enabler. So we're working with uh, uh, customers uh, as ADT and uh, bring uh, real world solutions to solving problem and automating the process. So I'll hand over to you guys. Yeah, no, th thanks, Will. And yeah, I think from, at least from our perspective, uh, the big, big national company that uh, has millions of customers that require upgrade, and, and obviously we're working through the process, the, the value of this cell balance and AV system solution is, is I, I think, pretty significant, to say the least. Um, and, and for all the reasons that you see on the screen, customer satisfaction, obviously many customers prefer uh, to have a DIY solution, uh, even, even pre-COVID, Pre-pandemic, um, many customers really migrated towards, um, you know, wanting to do things on their own if, if possible, and uh, you know, minimize uh, the, the time that a technician or or some service uh, provider might spend in their homes. So yeah, for sure, there's there's a satisfaction value for, for customers with this, um, you know, this this solution. Uh, uh, tied to that, obviously, is the minimal customer impact. Uh, obviously, much easier for customers to simply plug in a device than. You know, taking time off of work to meet with a technician and and you know the disruption that that causes. I'd say for for ADT on the on the value side, you know, for sure there's there's revenue retention. Um, obviously, when cellular is needed for the service to work for us for us to provide the solution that that you know our customers are paying us for, um, you know, clearly that that you know the ability to extend the life of that customer is preferred. So if if we can do that in a way. Um, that that kind of minimizes customer impact um, and, and enables that customer to uh, to to continue to be a happy customer for for years in it, uh, ahead. 
obviously that that's a that's a huge revenue impact uh, for the company uh, because we don't have to cancel those customers and and you know have the customers forego the service that we're offering. There's also a risk factor here as well, especially in the security space. We you know we're a life safety company, um, so we want to keep customers the accounts healthy, obviously, um, so that when there are issues, you know that the, the ADT agents can be alerted and we can therefore contact the authorities. Um, obviously, if there's a disruption to the network and the customers. Uh, system stops communicating, then you know there's a potential for for life safety issues, and and you know we, we certainly want to avoid that, and and obviously uh, not not good for the customers if the, in their time of need the signals aren't going out. And then I think Will touched on it uh, uh, briefly, but there there is a cost savings for sure to uh, to, to ADT from a, a just a difference between mailing out a device versus you know rolling a truck. I can't speak for all industries. But but certainly, you know, for us, there's there's cost savings. Um, and, you know, again, th there's there's efficiencies also in, in just being able to kind of mail out uh, to many customers at once versus having to, to work with customers to schedule specific time for their, uh, the technician to come into the home. So, so a ton of value, I think, there. And I would also say, you know, generally, maybe a different kind of um, thought process on the value side of it is, you know, this this. Uh, that there is some positivity, I guess, in some ways uh, on, on the network of the 3G sunset. Uh, obviously, the disruption is a challenge for the company, and, and you know we would prefer not to have to deal with that. But but obviously, understand that technology advances, and, and we have to support it. Um, but but one of the things that that I've uh, identified as a as kind of a you know a, an advancement for us as a company is it has caused us to to be more innovative in how we think. So so not only in just how do we meet this particular challenge. Um, uh, obviously, uh, you know, having to to innovate with the, the technology and the hardware and, and you know, certainly cell bounce, we, you know, we, we appreciated that solution so much. We actually uh, acquired uh, the, the, te the technology and the company and, and we're making it available to all of our competitors and, and all industries. Um, but, but it also ha had us really innovate in our strategy. How do we engage our customers? Um, you know, how do we uh, kind of solve these challenges in a way that, that makes us even more efficient than maybe what we would have been otherwise? Um, and it's also led to future innovation as well. So, so as we are designing the product of the future, um, obviously having the, the ability to switch cellular protocols in a much more seamless fashion is, is a, a key part of those future uh, solutions. And so, so it has driven, I, I think, in many ways, but both on the product side, but also operationally and how we operate as a business strategically, um, you know, some innovation. And then, you know, I, I don't want to diminish the, the the effort that that our providers, as in this case, AT and T, has taken to uh, to help support the solution. Um, they're a great partner, and we we already have a great relationship with them. But um, you know, th this program has really solidified our partnership and helped us, you know, to to work together to to create a solution that. You know, benefits uh, you know all parties, right? It benefits the customer first and foremost, um, and and then it benefits you know the, the company uh, for sure for for ADT in this case, and and it also benefits the carrier because you know we we keep those end customers, which is uh, obviously uh, an important part of uh, our, both of our business models going forward. So, I, I think you know th there's certainly challenges that are that are created with uh, the the sunset. There's also opportunity, and and I would say. You know, th these are some of the kind of the key ways that we look at the opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to like leverage this as a positive thing and and, and try to really drive uh, kind of future uh, innovation and, and, you know, partnership. So with that, I think I'm turning it back over to Jim to close us out. Yep. Thanks, Jay. Yep. So what what markets or what industries is this applicable to? Right. Who can benefit from this solution? Uh, at, at a very high level, you know, this this isn't for you know somebody on a cell phone or a, or a, or an inexpensive device that you can ship them something that costs less than a hundred dollars and just replace what they have. This is this is for a, a, a substantial solution or a, or a or a 3G device that's already in the field. Something that's uh, rather expensive to either rip and replace or upgrade, uh, etc. So typically, if it if you can you know, do the math and, and figure it costs more than $200 to upgrade the device. Uh, you know, we're a fit for that. And it, it could be also not just cost, but it's also the labor to install this. It could be the, the availability of components, you know, looking for an LTE, uh, you know, replacement for the 3G. Uh, you know, the market is, is impacted by a lot of global conditions right now. So, um, you know, we can be 
the strategy or we can be part of the overall strategy uh, is a hybrid approach that you, you know, rip and replace or do wholesale replacements or upgrades of some of your devices and then use us for others. We can be part of that overall strategy. So, um, you know, some of the markets that we're, we're addressing today, uh, obviously alarm systems is, is where we, uh, you know, kind of got our start, if you will. But we're also working with uh, customers in the automotive space. So uh, a lot of like heavy duty trucks or working with uh, telematics units, um, you know, in cab comp computing devices, things of that nature, uh, utilities, right? Electric meters, uh, solar monitoring uh, is, is a big one right now. Uh, a lot of those systems were deployed. Um, it could be medical of any machines, et cetera. So you see the list here. So again, anywhere where it's a, a you know, scheduling an appointment, rolling a truck, or very expensive uh, or uh, you know, obstructive or, or complex type of upgrade process, uh, we could be a fit. So for the cellular providers, right, uh, no matter how much notice you give your customers, you can give them 10 years notice, you're still gonna have laggards, you're still gonna have people that are gonna wait to the last second and, and, or ask for exemptions and, and exceptions to go past your sunset dates. And that doesn't do anybody any good. So we can help you move those customers along and help you keep the sunset dates. And so you can move on and migrate to the newer networks. And for the, the end users and the customers themselves uh, in any of these industries or, or, you know, maybe some others that we missed and hadn't thought of, um, you know, we can be part of your overall strategy to help you migrate in time. Uh, again, whether it's a cost savings, a component um, issue, a labor shortage, whatever the, 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 the you know, dynamic might be, uh, you know, we could be part of that solution with you. So with that, I want to wrap it up. I want to turn it back over to uh, Joanna uh, to take us into Q&A and um, do any final thoughts here. Thank you so much for your time. Joanna? Uh, thanks a lot for this presentation. Uh, with that, uh, as James already said, uh, we turn over to the Q&A session. Uh, I can see that we already have some questions submitted. Um, if you would like to ask, uh, submit a question, please use the right hand side panel. And uh, if I may ask, our speakers to start answering. Well, well, uh, Joanna, hi, Joanna. While we're loading up the, the questions here, and uh, so I just want to make a, a, a kind of a, a expand what Jim ended uh, with uh, on the last slide in terms of actually capability to different uh, industries. In a lot, in many parts of the world today, you know, uh, on the cellular side, even people are still on the two G networks, <laughs> so uh, they're. There's a long uh, a road ahead in terms of operating, right? So if you think of your uh, your industry, your adjacent industries, and uh, people are on 2G, 3G looking for a solution, you ought to think about three key things. One, how do I do this automated, automation? How do I do it remotely without sending a truck, without sending a, uh, a, a guy on site or receiving a call in my, a call center. And the third one that we didn't uh, expand too much, limited the time here on this webinar, is self-service, self-service. But we did say DIY, right? Do it yourself, a solution. But these are the key things as you contemplate uh, moving forward. And Jay also mentioned, this is not just a, a, a 3G sunset, a totally negative. Take advantage of the event, the opportunity to set yourself up or digital transformation, right? And uh, there are things that you can rethink of how your business flows, how you can uh, operate more uh, efficiently as a digitized business. So we are excited coming together with cell bonds and ADT. Um, I really uh, very grateful for ADT's co uh, collaboration with us, uh, deploying the solution. And uh, so uh, with that, I think the questions are coming in now. Yeah, I'll take the, the this question here. Uh, there's a question, uh, elaborate a little bit further on the installation process. So, um, 
Yeah, it, it is truly plug and play from the standpoint that these come pre-programmed uh, with a 4G SIM card inside and the information needed to establish the connection on the 3G side. So again, you would you would simply mail these out to your customers. They would remove them from the box, plug it into a standard outlet. There are other variants too that can draw on different power sources, but for this case, let's, let's just say it's in a home um, and you plug it into a standard outlet, it'll go out and establish the 4G connection first with the carrier. Uh, there are some LED lights on the front just so if the owner wants to, to watch and make sure it's connected, it's also monitored in the background so they, they don't have to sit there and watch it, but it, the light will turn green as a 4G connection. Uh, then it goes and it, and it finds that 3G device. Again, it's, it's pre-programmed um, to, to look for that specific device and it establishes and locks down that, that connection. It's a, it's a low power transmitter, right? It doesn't transmit across neighborhoods or miles it acts as a very small base station, if you will, with a range of about 25 to 50 feet. So it gives you some flexibility on where you can place this. Uh, it establishes that 3G connection. That 3G device now knows that the preferred device it connects to is the cell bounce device. In the background, it's all monitored. It shows it has the connection. It does a, a, a test with the data pass through and they're off and running. If there are any issues, then it's it's Again, it's flagged in the background. The, the end user doesn't have to do anything and we can resolve that uh, remotely. Um, there is a variant also that uh, for vehicles, uh, we can also attach hardwired in that case. So if you wanna put it in the cab of a truck, we can obviously connect wirelessly or we can fit between the external antenna of the TCU or whatever device is in the, the vehicle itself. So there are some options as far as mounting and installation goes, but for the most part, you power it up and it's pre-programmed to do everything. And obviously a lot of that um, has to do with the ACS powering it in the background. Jim, I got a question for you. Um, so I just, it just dawned on me because when we work in uh, Latin American countries like Mexico, uh, the home Wi-Fi always has this issue of uh, signal interference because people are living house to house very close, unlike, unlike in the U.S., right? So what even Wi-Fi signal interference? So this thing you just mentioned, uh, transmitting 25 meter or something, what is the signal uh, interference uh, issues? So first and foremost, right, each one of these is pre-programmed to work with a specific 3G device. So even if there are other devices within range of the transmission, it will only pair up with that device that it's programmed for. Um, and as far as any kind of other uh, signals, either from Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, just overall RF type of interference, uh, it does have uh, a monitoring in the background that if it does sense interference, uh, the carrier can, in, in cell bounce, can dynamically change the frequency in the channel that it transmits on uh, to um, clear up any of that uh, possible interference. It's also the time of production. We know where these units are gonna go and they're pre-programmed to work on the optimal uh, channels and frequencies given to us by the carriers themselves. So there's a lot going on in the background to make sure that uh, interference is, is eliminated or at least minimized as much as possible. So in other words, uh, it's critical we collaborate, not just between among ourselves here, but also with the carrier themselves, right? Absolutely. So the carriers are critical in this. So uh, it, it's definitely a three-way conversation between us, you know, the end customers and the carriers and how this can all work together. So it's, it's a, you know, it benefits both carriers and end customers at the end of the day. Uh, they, and, they, and they both have a, a part to play in this. So they're, they're absolutely critical. We got a question. I think I can take a part of it. This next one: Which continent do you think is more required and needed for solution? Europe, America, Africa? Uh, two. What do you think about boundaries in terms of some countries already switching to 5G? Okay. Uh, the, the, the second question probably a better answered by Jim, but I'll answer first. I think uh, the, the, uh, this thing doesn't do the 5G <laughs> upgrading to 5G not yet. So that's probably going to be on, on Jim's uh, roadmap or Jay's roadmap there. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, the continents, uh, geography. So the U.S. are probably uh, further ahead in terms of a 3G sunset schedule. 
you know, AT&T announced date, you know, uh, last we checked, it's still uh, February next year, Verizon uh, a year after that. So uh, other parts like uh, in Asia, uh, most part of Asia, Latin America, the 3G sunset is further out, 2023, 2024, even 2025. So uh, that's actually even better for all of us to work together and, uh, and uh, all the parties, the ecosystem partners to bring the solution, set up the solution to work together, allow us enough time to get the device ready for that purpose. But I'll turn back to you, Jim, uh, for a geography, you see uh, any difference or any a timing, uh, anything? Yeah, I mean, overall, I agree, right? In Here in the in the U.S., um, there's some stated dates. Now, carriers globally, they're all... <laughs> They're all over the place, right? There's different dates. Uh, the U.S. is is coming up here in the next, you know, year and a half is going to be completely off of 3G. Um, Europe, I know there's pockets that are moving faster than others. Uh, makes it a bit challenging over there uh, for everyone, right? Um, certain countries, certain carriers, certain regions, a lot of roaming over there. So it's it's a um, could be a challenge to to migrate people over to 4G um, in. in and then Asia as well. Uh, I see a lot of dates in Asia actually that are, are a little longer out. So uh, definitely are addressing that as well. Um, but it seems like the, the 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 shortest sunset dates, if you will, or the or the nearest dates are in the U.S. Uh, and in Europe. Um, as far as countries switching to 5G, um, you know, 4G is not going to go away anytime soon. I mean, you got at least a 10 year run on that and in, in, in the cellular carriers can talk to more of that specifically. But, you know, 5G is just hitting the, the market, if you will, and cell phones where where the new technology always starts. It takes a long time to migrate. If you think of the migration from 3G to 4G, right, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it takes a, a span of some 10 years really to, to, to migrate over. Um, you know, the, the Cat1, the Cat-M, narrowband IoT networks, et cetera, for IoT uh, are not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, and, and we can work with the different um, uh, technologies, if you will. So, again, the narrowband IoT, Cat-M1, Cat1, right? We have different flavors uh, that we can address on the, on the LTE side. So um, we see there's a pretty long run runway for that. Um, now, when the time comes to migrate from 4G to 5G, uh, yeah, we'd love to solve that problem. Uh, we'd love to also help with, you know, when the 2G sunsets, in an example for Europe, most of that's not going to happen until 2025, as that's more prevalent in Europe than 3G. Um, you know, and, and we're already looking at a solution that can migrate 2G to some of these, you know, low power LTE uh, technologies as well. So, uh, you know, we expect some of this on our roadmap, but for the next uh, at least five to 10 years, um, you know, we think, and the carriers have, have also told us that, uh, you know, the 4G technologies will be alive and well. I think we're waiting for the next question to load up here. And uh, I'm gonna ask a question to Jay. Um, from ADT's perspective, uh, looking at, uh, your operation, you may even have a, you know, a business overseas in other countries, right? So you'll probably have a perspective on this question in terms of uh, the different uh, geography. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think from, from our perspective, so ADT is is uh, currently continental U.S. There are uh, kind of uh, ADT divisions that, that are uh, in other regions of the world as well, um, but but they're, they're separate entities. Um, but, but yeah, I think, you know, for, from my perspective, uh, you know, any region of the world that is having a 3G sunset to 4G or, or, or even in the future to 5G, uh, this type of solution is, is, is valuable. I think um, maybe it was Jim that mentioned not, not only is there a cost factor, but, but certainly for, for many companies, there's a labor challenge as well. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, challenging sometimes to hire the, the hundreds of techs that are required to, to just manage the upgrade process and still maintain the, the kind of cor current course and speed uh, of the business. And so, so there's, there's a lot of challenges that, that companies that have, uh, that, are, that are impacted by the sunset will have. And I think in, you know, in some industries, the, you know, the cost to upgrade the, the radio um, 
can be significant. And I think, you know, Jim kind of set the threshold and say, hey, if you're spending more than $200 for that, uh, it, it's probably a worthwhile, um, you know, exercise to look at at the, uh, the, the cell bound solution. And I would say, even if your your costs are lower, that there's that you you can't really discount the fact that, that that it's much easier to ship out you know hundreds or thousands of devices in a month than it is to to schedule and actually get technicians into a home um, you know at that same quantity. So so there is a there's a value associated with that for sure, um, and, and I don't think that changes regardless of what region you're in or around the world. I think the key for the regions is really going to be on the timing of the sunsets and getting out in front of it in time to, to get the solution, uh, you know, tested and implemented and, and to give uh, the, those customers, those uh, those companies time to actually engage with their customers and, and mail the devices out. Jay, uh, just based on our experience, I'm going to ask a question uh, while we're waiting for others to come up. You know, um, so maybe there are, uh, during your deployment or collaboration with us, with Cellbounce, with at and all these deployment solution. So are there any lessons learned or best practices to share with our audience? Yeah, I think um, I mean, obviously it's, anytime you're dealing with this type of technology, I think there's, you know, there's roadblocks and there's hurdles that that, that you come across. I think, um, you know, kudos to, to AV Systems and kudos to the Cell Bounce team and, and AT&T. Um, there was a, a, you know, great amount of partnership that, that you know, essentially came out of uh, some of those challenges and, and and it also made for a much more robust solution. Um, so, so I think, you know, in terms of lessons learned, I, I, I would say, hey, we probably uh, in an ideal world would, would have, you know, had more time to kind of sort through some of these issues, um, you know, certainly, but but honestly, I, you know, there's certain things you just you just can't plan for. Um, but, but I think just ensuring that you've got a, a good collaboration uh, amongst the, uh, the, the all the parties that are kind of responsible for the technical implementation, I think that's critical. Um, and, and you know, I think you, you've hit on it, Will. Like we, we have um, obviously, AV Systems is a great partner in this. Um, you know, ADT historically wasn't uh, really familiar in in many ways with an ACS solution, and you know, having a, a, a quality partner that can help um, guide you through that process, somebody who's done it before, who who has the expertise, is is critical. And then obviously, you know, just working and supporting the the carriers on some of the the technical Im implementation on their side. Um, I, I think you know that that's probably the, the the biggest lesson is just make sure that you've got you know real tight uh, collaboration, good good project management through that process, and good communication. And 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 if you can nail that down, then it'll be a, I think a pretty smooth implementation. Thank you. That's a really good insight. Yep. Uh, another question I see: uh, What happens if there's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a power outage? Uh, what happens then? Um, so you can order this with a battery backup or without. So if you order it with a battery backup, it, it, it's roughly 24 hours. So um, you know it shouldn't have any impact. Obviously, if there's a, a, a temporary power outage in that case, um, if the power outage lasts longer than 24 hours. Uh, you know, this is monitored in the background and they'll be notified that, that you know, hey, something's wrong with this unit and can notify the homeowner uh, and can take action on that or, or, or the supplier. Um, if it's, you know, obviously when the power comes back up, whether it's, you know, if, if you don't have a battery backup, let's say, and the power goes out, it's, you know, obviously going to shut down like the rest of the system that it's attached to. Um, and, you know, when the power comes back on, it'll simply reboot and, you know, take a few minutes to reestablish the connection and work as normal. So there's no, there's no necessarily damage to it. Um, but again, you, you know, you can get it with a battery backup or without, depends on your use case and, you know, your availability needs. Very good. We've got another question here. Uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, the question is, I wanted to ask more about integrations. What if I already have a system in place? or even multiple systems. How complex can such integrations be with the solution? I think that maybe that's the question I can uh, take on here. A good question. So um, in terms of integration, if you have systems uh, in this day and age, uh, very hard to start with a greenfield, right? Everybody has something uh, going. And uh, your system, if it's built on industry standards, integration uh, fairly smooth. It's pretty easy. That's why we're all for 
uh, the hearing, you know, going with industry standards. So, but, you know, unfortunately we have uh, inherited a world, you got legacy systems, say your CRM system, your, you may have a dashboard uh, platform that from a certain vendor and uh, proprietary uh, technology and build on that. And you have your very uh, different uh, workflow you set up. So that needed some little bit of a customization work from the ACS management platform perspective. And, um, but it's still, it's, it's, it's still doable. And the question also said, if, even if I have multiple systems, well, number one, if you have a multiple systems, uh, number one, you want to make sure that using this opportunity to evaluate are these uh, multiple systems uh, all needed in the first place. If you're redundant, here's a perfect opportunity to deploy you know, the best of the best of a class, if you will, and the best of breed. Uh, platforms, uh, take care of the 3G sunset devices, but also setting up your monitoring, managing your uh, other devices in your enterprise. As a matter of fact, the ACS, the platform itself, is primed to handle uh, not only just the TR69, but multiple uh, technologies as well. And we have experienced over 60 countries uh, deploy, managing over 150 million devices today. So that's a good question. I just uh, I want to make sure that so uh, we can we can do this integrations. Complexity really depends on how you set up your workflow internally, how many systems you have, if they are standards based or uh, proprietary. So we are all for for you know going with industry standards. That's why we're talking about TR69 from uh, Broadband Forum. And I also want to add uh, uh, one point to uh, the question uh, Jim just answered, if there's a power outage, what happens? The number one, first of all, the ECS will detect that. <laughs> will be able to tell your service provider the device is down. That's what the, the, the uh, management platform alerts are uh, going to show. So that's, uh, that's my answer there. Um, uh, any, any of you, Jay and Jim, want to uh, chime in more on this uh, integration point? No, I think I have nothing to add. Uh, yes, Jim does. <clears throat> no, I think I think we're good, and I think we're uh, just about out of time here. So um, we can answer any other questions offline, or obviously you can connect with us directly. Uh, here's our information on the slide here. Um, Joanna, I don't know if you had any final comments or or closing statements here, but I'll, I'll turn it back over to you to to take us home. Thanks a lot. Uh, I don't think we have uh, any more questions. Uh, as Jim said, uh, if you would like to ask uh, something, feel free to reach out to our speakers. We will be happy to answer them by email. And also we will share the recording of this presentation with you. Um, I think that's all. Many thanks for joining us today. Uh, thank you uh, on behalf of our speakers. Thanks a lot and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. I also thank, uh, take a moment to thank Jay and Jim for our partnership. Thank you very much. Kudos to you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, guys. Will. Same. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.